I don't know who you are, but I do know what you need. I can tell you, I know some gentlemen with a very particular set of skills. Skills they have attained over a long career of studying tape and statistics. Skills they want to share to make you a nightmare for the rest of your league. Head over to www.ultimatedraftkick.com and order it right now. You will be prepared for your draft. Your league will be frightened of you. And you will kill them. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time, boys. I just checked. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure. A little bit. A little bit of football today. I'll take it. It's just one game. I thought I was going to get a... When you started, I thought I was going to be... It's mock, mock draft mock draft time. It was... And then I was like, oh, crap. Is it mock draft and football time? Which it is. It's mock football time. Yeah. Which is really what this is. Preseason is mock football. How many games tonight, Mike? Just the one. We got the Cleveland Browns at the Philadelphia Eagles. And I am... Very much enjoying that they have the records of the team. Oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> so the Cleveland Browns coming in at a at a cool one and one, mm-hmm. <laughs> and the Eagles are zero and one. My my mom at <laughs> that uh, when I saw her, she's like she wanted to talk Cardinals preseason victory. Oh, come, they, come back, they did have come a back huge win comeback over win. the Broncos, and I was like, mm. yeah, you probably saw more of that than I did. But um, <laughs> welcome in one and all mock draft episode. I I'm gonna make a prediction. I think this will be maybe the most entertaining and informative mock draft of the offseason. Hmm. So uh, we've got we've got uh, a mayhem mock draft today. It's a battle of the battle of the turns. Battle of the yeah the one hundred one and the one twelve. You two will be drafting head to head. I will be um, scattering some bombs throughout the draft for you to navigate, much like you know league mates will do in your actual drafts. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, the big story this week, last chance to enter to win the ultimate draft kit for life. Uh, our giveaway concludes on Friday. We have a live stream that ends at 630 Eastern. So that'll be the deadline. You enter by going to ultimatedraftkit.com and picking up the ultimate draft kit by Friday. And so those of you that have already supported the show and purchased that, not only do you have the best resource possible for your draft uh, on the desktop, on mobile, we have an app for the UDK, but you also are entered to win the UDK for life. We're also going to give away a signed Derrick Henry jersey and uh, some more swag, a signed T. Higgins mini helmet. And the winner, like I said, will be announced at the end of that live stream. We'll be live on YouTube, Twitch, uh, we'll be live on uh, X. Can you still do that? Yeah. Well, that's great. You thought they might have shut that down? I don't, dude. I don't you know. Don't what know. They're, you I don't, know. Who knows what they're doing? Um, I'm going to call it Twitter. Great. For a little while until Google changes the thing. Where like, if you search on Google right now, it'll say something say, like, did "You search topics X? on Twitter." They say, "Did you mean Twitter?" <laughs> yeah. Um, and then of course I did. It'll Google. be everywhere. So you can tune in there, ultimatedraftkit.com to get involved. Uh, the Dynasty podcast. Yeah. It released a new episode yesterday morning. It was, and it was the inaugural Oof. Nasty Boys of Summer episode. Deep, deep, deep where, cuts. Look, that's what Dynasty... That's the really... That's the part that brings me more joy than any other part of the Dynasty football or fantasy format is finding those guys. They're just, they're just a little bit nasty, mm. but they're, like, they might be on the waiver. And you can pick them up, and somehow they turn into a starter for you for a couple weeks. And I believe last year, Mike, you and I won a championship. We did. With Hit that button. Jarrett Patterson in our lineup. No, well, last year was Hassan Haskins. Ah. Hit that button again for Hassan. <laughs> but the great but, thing is sometimes a nasty boy like, uh, like Jawan Johnson. Oh, that's a nasty boy. You pick him up, and all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I apparently have a tight end one on my team now. Thank you. 
Yeah, I mean, that is um, it's what it's all about. And there's nothing quite like the satisfaction of investing in a nasty boy and having it pay off over the long term. That's like, what I'm telling you. It's, it is the greatest feeling. And so, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of them. And uh, check that out, the Dynasty Podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. Let's hop into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right, this is significant. Joe Mixon found not guilty of aggravating menacing. Okay. And so um, that is completely dealt with. In the court of law, there will not be any further ramifications for Joe Mixon, who I think is a screaming value this year. He is the best running back by a lot on a Super Bowl caliber team who will catch a ton of passes with the absence of Samaj P. Ryan. Already did last year, for what it's worth. He will have massive opportunity. So um, that's good news for those of you with Joe Mixon on the roster. Jonathan Taylor left camp again, this time for a personal reason. His absence is excused, not related to contract, according to the Colts reporter Stephen Holder. But we have yet to feel comfortable with Jonathan Taylor this offseason. It's bad vibes. Uh, Traylon Burks, LCL sprain uh, during practice. That's great news. Yeah, if because... If you saw the video and, you know, when the way he went down, you just worried, okay, it, this could easily be, uh, you know, an... Uh, an ACL tear and his season could be over. It looks like he's going to, you know, need two to four weeks to recover. Maybe he's not there for week one, but he's not missing the season. It is not my favorite thing to have, you know, had happen for a guy that has dealt repeatedly with injury. Um, last year's rookie season could have been much better, obviously, if it had not been disrupted a couple of times. Brees Hall still dealing with occasional knee soreness. Still wonders if he can make certain cuts. Makes sense. Um, Matthew Betts, our injury expert, said it's normal at this point in the recovery. But it's also, I think, something we expected for the first half of the season, that there was going to be. Um, look, that's that's half the battle with these major injuries is player confidence in doing what they used to do. The margin of error at the NFL level to be a successful running back is so small, right? Like, it's... You know, there's a lot of guys that make the NFL as as running backs and they never really get snaps and they never make teams and they never contribute because they're just a little bit worse than the elite of the elite. So getting that confidence back, that's going to take some time. It's why they brought in Dalvin Cook. And, uh, it, you know, it adds to the, the fuel that maybe Brees Hall is a second half winner like he was projected to be last year at this time of the year. Yeah, it, it, I mean, the the... Season kicks off here in a couple weeks. If right now he's still dealing with some soreness and you know has a little bit of the mental hiccups on on being able to cut, you can guarantee that they are not going to just open him up for full force football here come week one. That's just it's it's not. There's no chance that that happens, especially with Dalvin Cook there. So when you draft Brees Hall, you need to know that you're you're not starting him week one. You're not. You probably aren't starting him until week three at least Jordan Addison in the concussion protocol could return mm -hmm. as early as Monday won't be in the preseason game okay which is a bummer because yeah. you know you like to see the rookies play just to have them on display he had a good first and game more than likely I mean with with the new preseason structure it would surprise me a little bit if they put him into week three it feels like teams just preseason week three which is now the final preseason week they just are like okay uh clear the bench if you're, if you're not going to make the team, just go out there and put some tape out. Russell Gage, we got the word. It was a season-ending injury, yes. ruptured right patellar tendon. That's super unfortunate for Russell Gage. Uh, I mean, how how old is Russell at this point? I'm trying to pull it up real quick. He is 27 and a half. That's just that's a devastating knee injury to have to come back from at his age. It it could be the end. Uh. Trey Palmer was a sixth-round rookie wide receiver on that roster if you're looking for a nasty boy in Dynasty. And then Kate Otten, I think, will be the yes. the biggest beneficiary. I already kind of like Kate Otten as a sleeper, second-year tight end on a team that, you know. Jason refuses. I have refused. <laughs> and then I've, I've tried to talk him into Kate Otten so many times. You know, it's Mike Evans and it's, and it's Chris Godwin mm -hmm. that are going to soak up targets, both having great camps, both ready to rumble with what looks to be Baker Mayfield after – 
he has created separation between him and Kyle Trask. A couple of Lions wide receiver injury updates. Jamison Williams, hamstring injury. He will not be part of the preseason. It, it, it doesn't – everybody's reacting very strongly to this. I guess I'm not because I know he's got six extra weeks to recover. It's, it's not about the recovery for me. It's, okay. about, it's about a player who missed most of last year. Then when he was on the field, he got just a handful of targets. He, had, he ended this, the year with one total reception. He wasn't a full-time player by any stretch. But this is a first round wide receiver who by the end of the year is playing, you know, twenty five percent of the snaps. But in the in the time on the field, he got nine targets. He caught one of them. Granted that one was a forty one yard house call, so that's great. But the fact that he has his six week suspension and now he can't practice with the team on trying to while they're trying to install the offense right now, and then he has to be removed from the team, it's it it, it makes the the idea of picking him up around week four or week five, like when will he really be ready? Like, are you going to be confident to just plug him right in week seven? And at this point I would say no. I'd imagine he's going to hit a bunch of waiver wires in week two or three when people see his name at the end of drafts, want to take him, then realize ah, I need roster spots and I can't put him on IR and they're going to just let him go. And, and so, yeah, you're going to need to pay attention, but you're right. I mean, he's not, confidence is not going to be the word associated with that addition. Upside will be. Sure. But not confidence. Amon Ross St. Brown likely back on the field between uh, sometime this week or next week. Small ankle injury should be okay. Devontae Adams says he is ready to go. All right. He's back at practice. Um, Dolphins left tackle Taron Armstead mm. carted off with a right leg injury. Not good. This is a very, very good uh, tackle. And if you look at the the performance on the field with and without Teron Armstead, it is uh, pretty wide. The, why, don't, why don't you share the, those numbers? Well, yeah, I mean, the uh, Rich Rebar tweeted out when he was on the field, Miami quarterbacks were pressured on just 28.4% of dropbacks. With him off the field, that climb, that climbed Lord. to 46.5%. Sack rate more than doubled. 46 and a half. That is not a sustainable rate for quarterback health. No, especially if your quarterback is to a tongue of Iloa. Yeah. So that is. Hopefully he's all right. Yeah, not good. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. You guys ready for this? Oh, I don't Can think so. Can we Wait. be ready for this? <laughs> no, you can't. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Well, this is going to be fun. We got a Mock Draft Mayhem episode looking at a Ballers preferred format draft. 12 team, half PPR, one quarterback, two running back, two wide receiver, one tight end, one flex, four bench spots. I'm going to have the power. I got the power. You're going to have to react. And uh, very interestingly... It's going to be a whole bunch of back-to-back -back picks on today's show. So, quick reminder, Jason's at the 101, Mike's at the 112. Do not lock your pick in until you get permission from me because you got back-to-back -back yes, picks. Yes, sir. You got back-to-back -back picks. I can't have any funny business going on because I've got three mayhems to use on each of you, the ability to veto a pick, making you choose again, and we are adding the wrinkle of when you choose – Again, because I veto your pick, it has to be another position. Cannot be the same position. Oh, well, how nice for you. You get that <laughs> new rule. I didn't get that rule. No, you didn't. Ridiculous. The second one is I can replace a pick with a player of my choice. You won't like it. And the third one, I will give the power. I'll, I'll bestow the power to your competitor. Okay. I'll give them the ability to make your pick for you. And uh, we'll kick this thing off, Jason. You are the you're the man that starts this draft. You're at the one oh one. Yeah, right now Give at me the, the pick. The one oh one is going to be uh, the one oh one is usually Justin Jefferson in most formats. Um, I think it's if you wanted to go Chase, if you want to go Christian McCaffrey, there's a couple different good options at the one oh one. For me, it, if this was a full PPR, if this was a three wide receiver, it would be an easy Justin Jefferson. Since it's two wide receiver, two running back, and a flex, it's half PPR. 
I'm going to take the positional scarcity of Christian McCaffrey if I have permission, which of course I do because right now it's all good options here, right? Correct. Yes, you can uh, start the draft with the expected selection of a stud. Christian McCaffrey off the board, followed by Chase and Jefferson, then Eckler, Barkley, Kelsey, Tyreek Hill at 107. Like that value. Cooper Cup at 108. Like that value. Uh, if I could guarantee those two players at 7 and 8, that would be my preferred draft spot <laughs> yeah. in most drafts. Bijan, who lives to be drafted at 109 these days, uh, is taken there. And then Stephon Diggs and Devontae Adams before Mike is on the clock at 112 with two picks here. So it's time to make your choices, Mike. Have you mocked at the turn here? I Not like this, where I feel like I'm being pushed into a very high T start and just going double-double uh, on these running backs. Because left on on the board is uh, my – look, I have Derrick Henry at number two, and he is on the board. I got uh, – it's it's a toss-up between Tony Pollard and Nick Chubb. I have Pollard technically at five and Nick Chubb at six, but these guys are within just a mere uh, fraction of, uh, of each other. And I have been taking – I've been taking Tony Pollard a lot in the – in the mock draft. So I'm actually going to switch it up uh, just a bit to see if, you know, I want to see what the, what the team looks like at the end. So I'll give you both. My picks here would be Derek Henry and Nicholas Chubb. Wow. A delicious combo of running backs that I will allow you to select. All right. Ooh, I like that. I'm going to give the respect to King Henry, the Yeti. And then I will take Nick Chubb in this. What a second what, round pick. What, what a loser. The amount of touches. Between those two players that you guarantee for that roster. The amount of fragility and risk with those two I players. I don't know. Is, is there really risk? Yes, there there definitely is. I don't know. I don't know if there's risk. I mean, I feel like you essentially nullify the Henry risk with the Chubb selection in a lot of ways. But um, So Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, A.J. Brown goes next. C.D. Lamb, Jonathan Taylor, Garrett Wilson. A couple of quarterbacks. I feel like I need to do like some push-ups real quick or something. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm just... Phew. The testosterone is, oh, okay. is coursing. Dan Campbell would be coursing a, through my body. Uh, Patrick Mahomes goes at two hundred six. Amon Ross St. Brown at two hundred seven. Josh Jacobs at two hundred eight. Josh Allen at two hundred nine. And then Waddle and Stevenson. So Jason, you are back on the clock. I am back. Oh come on! <sighs> what what are you upset about? Nothing. Clearly. <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> all right. Right now I've got Christian McCaffrey. I'm looking at. The wide receiver position, and I really do like one of them better than the rest. So if I could have my selection here, I would take Christopher Olave. Is that the reaction that you were providing, Mike? It's one of them. It's one of them. <laughs> there's, um, there's many problems with this current scenario. Yeah, you, you're not going to tease what you would do with 301 yet? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I, was, I thought Mike was so dumb to say both of his picks together. Mayhem. In that case... I'm going to use my first mayhem, and I'm going to hand the pick over to Mike, the fantasy hitman. You're going to get one guy that you want here, probably. Okay. But I don't know if you're going to get two. All hmm. right. Well. So, Mike, you get the opportunity to disrupt a roster that starts with Christian McCaffrey. All right. and I don't know how you do that, but we're going to find out. I Yeah. There's not a whole lot I can do. I can just kind of disrupt Jason's plan, or at least what my plan would have been if I were Jason, because I love the Chris Olave pick right there. Uh, just a young wide receiver who is on the precipice of a of a massive breakout. And he would be his wide receiver one. I mean, they yes. would be leaning on Olave to be the guy. But I'm going to give you a wide receiver one who's technically a wide receiver two. I'm going to give you T. Higgins. Okay. Wide okay. receiver one B for the Cincinnati Bengals, setting you up. You'll 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 see what I have done here for this next pick. All right. Um. Well. Uh, since I am on the clock, I guess Chris Olave is still there. Yep. So I would select Christopher Olave. Go for it. Oh, all right. Go for it. Perfect. All right. Because all, all I didn't want 
was you to hit that turn with Christian McCaffrey and Tony Pollard and go Chris Olave and Tony Pollard. That is my skin would have just burst off of my body in yeah, rage. They just flash it is, everywhere. It is one hundred percent what I would have done. Yeah, those were the because two players. That's the move that I would have taken. And uh, man, do I like the one on one if if the draft can fall like, like that. That was the that was the true no. Is Tony Pollard <laughs> fell to the edge of round two? That is just. That is, is he was in autos. consideration for you, right? Yes. At the turn. Absolutely he was. So that was your your cry into yeah. the night. These stupid auto-gen picks. Yeah. Uh, so Higgins and Olave, wide receiver, wide receiver. One of those a mayhem selection. Uh, disrupting your Tony Pollard. I mean, you could have taken Pollard. I, that that would have been a... Uh, so here's what happened, just mm. to walk people through it. When I got to my pick and saw Tony Pollard, that's who I wanted. But to play the game, I brought up Christopher Olave first right? so that then there was a chance you know, I could get Pollard. But then after talking up Christopher Olave, realizing <laughs> I wanted him, I'm like, huh, he's still there, and I could take him. So, I mean, there, there's really no downside with either one of those players. All right, well, you have McCaffrey, Higgins, and Olave to start this draft, and uh, Pollard and Najee Harris go next. Interesting spot for both those guys. Mark Andrews at 304. Jalen Hurts at 305. Then Devontae Smith, his teammate. Brees Hall, Lamar Jackson. Jimmy or Gibbs, uh, full T for Team 9 with Bijan, Taylor, and Gibbs. Uh, Joe Burrow goes next. you got five quarterbacks off the board at this point. And then Travis Etienne, a player I think we're going to be talking a lot about over the next couple of weeks. Uh, he goes next. Mike, you are on the clock at uh, the 312 and the 401. I, yep, I'm, I am up. Travis Etienne going a spot before me was just a, few, a full blessing for this team because I know the scheming would have certainly started for Jason's brain. The, the, the risk of taking the two running backs, while I have two very high-level running backs, um, and I'm happy with that start, but the wide receivers left for that true wide receiver one range. DK Metcalf, Andy, I'm sure you're very comfortable with him as a number one. I am not so much. Kind of the same for Debo. Uh, so it feels like Keenan Allen might be the pick there. But then I go back over to the running back position, and he was mentioned in the news that this case was, was dropped. He's still inside the top ten of my running back rankings. And Joe Mixon would be my pick right here. Joe Mixon, the selection. I'm going to let you take that player. All right. I'm going to let you take Joe Mixon. Nice. That's, no, that's fine. Let's build up a, oh, let's build up a disaster you're here. You're going to have the most T of all time. <laughs> and uh, you've, Keenan you've, Allen would be my next pick. And that's not happening. <laughs> that's fine. Mayhem. What's that's fine. What's actually interesting here, and I'm going to take the pick. This is going to be my selection okay. uh, in this draft because I, I see something here. I see... You know, you're going through this draft. You're through three rounds. You see Allen and Mahomes and Hurts and Jackson and Burrow go off the board. And look, you're at the turn. Uh huh. You got a long wait. I do. But you love a couple of Justins in I, this draft. That's tr I do. I do. And even though you've got no wide receivers on this roster yet, I think you want to be out ahead of this quarterback situation. I do. And um, <laughs> of course I do. Of course you do. So I <laughs> think you're going to take Justin. Herbert. Oh, okay. Go ahead and select Justin Herbert, Mike. That is your oh, pick here. You've got to be so excited that that wasn't a running back given to you here. I had I I kind of figured the the mayhem was coming, and I was expecting the other position, which I would have taken Justin Fields. So going Herbert over Fields is not the the best for me. Oh, this feels <laughs> this is not this is not an ideal build. <laughs> Henry, Chubb, Mix, and Herbert. Oh, come on. But we've got lots of rounds left for you All to right. fix it, Mike. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you've got to navigate that. Debo, Samuel, DK Metcalf, and Calvin Ridley go next. I think all three of those players, myself, I think are values in the fourth round. Kenneth Walker, who uh, took first team reps finally back at practice. I have... Goes at 405. Uh, where are you guys at with, with Kenneth Walker right now? I've shifted. I've moved him... I moved up, him up at, a little bit. At least a yep. few spots of I noticed we actually both both moved Charbonnet down a little bit. Yeah, the it just the even with the injury, I mean he's back on the field now. We we he, I don't think he's in full practice just yet. I could be incorrect about that. 
But the the drum beat out of Seattle is still Kenneth Walker's the guy. He was back right back to first for the running back team drills, and more and more he, he has his inefficiencies. Certainly, uh, the goal line is a big concern, but I think he's going to be the primary guy. I certainly think he's going to start that way and feeling pretty good about it as well. Um, so Walker goes at 405. We're going to take a quick break and come back with the rest of the draft. All right, Mike's team, Henry Chubb, Mixon, Herbert, fourth round continues. Hawkinson goes at 406. Keenan drops to 407, then Amari Cooper at 408. Aaron Jones, Justin Fields. Yeah, that one was so tough. I really wanted him to make it to me, but two picks too early. And then Miles Sanders at 411. Jason, you are on the clock. You've got back-to-back -back picks. Yeah, I, I'm going to look at taking a player that I think Mike and I both really believe in, really like. I'm not sure you like him as much, Andy. So if I'm allowed to take this pick, since I've got Christian McCaffrey and two wide receivers, I'd be looking at J.K. Dobbins, who is also back uh, to practice and looks healthy and spry. Now, that would be Dobbins ahead of Madison and Cameron Akers and Damian Pierce and James Conner. Mm -hmm. Why don't you make that pick? Oh, all right, I will. Hmm. Hmm. Now, uh, Julia, we are a benevolent master of mayhem over here. Yeah, I wouldn't hold your breath, Mike. We're entering the fifth <laughs> round. And do uh, I even need to we even well, need to say who I would pick? Yes, a, you do. We actually. got a little. Uh, That's the rules. Well, no, you don't. What? Surprise. Oh. Oh. It's deucer mayhem time. What? Oh, my gosh. The light. There's a full light. There's show? a whole light show going on. Wow. All so right. we have what was that? a bit of a surprise here. We've got Deucer Mayhem. They are chuckling back in Deucer's Alley. And guess what, gentlemen? They own the fifth round. They own the fifth round for your teams. Wait, They're so making both your picks this round. I just wanted to be clear. Mm -hmm. I got Mayhemed into Justin Herbert to go mm -hmm. with, with my high-T team. Mm -hmm. And I will also get this one. That's uh -huh. right. That is correct. Uh, you'd love to see it. <laughs> uh, the deucers have control now. Cool. Uh, Brooks, Al, Kyle, uh, who's in charge of these picks? It's a group effort, but I'm going to make the announcement. We've got the perfect pick for Jason. Oh, baby. It's right up with his ADP, and it's just too perfect. Jason is selecting George Kittle here. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Ah. That makes sense. I've bodied him. Look, he's a great player. Uh, he'll have a couple big games, but wow. not a guy I want to take at the f at, at his ADP. So Go ahead and take him. you got to make the pick. you got to click the button yourself. George Kittle of 501, congratulations. Thanks. Uh, the Deucers hitting hard with their first Deucers mayhem. Judy Pierce, Hopkins, London, Lawrence, McLaurin at 507, like that. DJ Moore, Christian Watson, Cameron Akers, Alexander Madison, and the Deucers, uh, they wield their power yet again here at the end of the fifth round for Mike's Henry, Chubb, Mixon, and Herbert team. I hope you've had enough time to consider – uh, I'm seeing big nodding from Al Borland. Well, Mike I, is looks like a man who <laughs> had his lunch money stolen. Nope. Same, same thing. A, a perfect player fell right here to Mike, and uh, Mike's <laughs> going to go with DeAndre Swift here. Oh yes! You just you yes! didn't even draft me a player. <laughs> you drafted like look. I guess everyone needs that one player to drop after week one. Oh my, DeAndre Swift. At Goodness. ADP here, that's right At where he's ADP. going. At ADP. Which, to be fair, is a terrible ADP for him. <laughs> I feel like No that one is... should be drafting DeAndre Swift right now in the fifth round. I think what they did, the Deucers Mayhem was disconnecting Mike's internet so he got auto-drafted. That's what I think just happened on that pick. No, they want my draft to look like a deuce. <laughs> uh -huh. This is terrible. Well, let's see how you piece this together, Mike. We, okay. We are going to be benevolent. You've got this pick. Six I get to take the pick? You get to take this pick. Perfect. Tyler Lockett. That Tyler. Is a, that is an easy auto selection for me. You took him over Godwin in Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Lockett, the 601 in the draft. The king of wide receiver 15. I feel like they drafted a retired player for you. At, at, with DeAndre Swift. Like, Jason has to be thrilled with Kittle right now. Uh, yeah, Kittle is so good. <laughs> Kittle is usable. <laughs> well, he, we, what, what I know about Kittle is he is definitely going to be 
a major part of the the team and yes. the offense. DeAndre Swift, I mean, there's still an outcome where he does do the Miles Sanders role. I just no. don't think any of us think no. that's going to happen. I think pass catching is is in the cards. The the end of sentence. Yeah the 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 problem with DeAndre Swift is like I'll I'll, I'll even give that to you, Jason. Of like some somehow they're like DeAndre Swift is our most talented running back, and he's going to be the Miles Sanders. Sure, in the range of outcomes, that would be really low probability. But who knows what the Eagles are thinking right now? But on the other side of something that is a probability is DeAndre Swift is, plays like eight snaps a game. Going in the sixth, in the fifth round, yeah, he was slightly ahead of where he's going on sleeper by three picks. But it it was uh, a shock. It was rude. It was great. How does it feel to have well uh, wielded some power? <laughs> yeah, that's that's what you get, Brooks. It's, it's a lot to deal with. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're just, we're gonna have a conversation after the show. I have a uh, question of clarity. Mm -hmm. Do you want Swift? What? <laughs> I'll trade him to you right now for this pick. Um, no, thank you. What, dude, six twelve for the five twelve? Just straight up. <laughs> usually, that would be a good deal. Um, was the Deucer's Mayhem an? I think that additional? was an additional. So now you still oh, have. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we get it's four. not in lieu of. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> it just gives me more room to to meander down the back of this draft next year when I'm in charge. Oh boy. Yeah. I'm just. I'm do, I'm making the whole draft. <laughs> Every round is mayhem. You, like, oh, you know the rules. <laughs> when we've had mayhem drafts before, we tried to build up. Okay. You have George Kittle, one of the teammates of your first pick, Christian McCaffrey. So you have the option. You could go some more 49ers here, Jason, but you are on the clock. <laughs> Higgins, Olave, Dobbins, McCaffrey, and Kittle. Um, I'm not certain. I I know Mike's been dealt a uh, a difficult hand, but Henry Chubb Mixon with Lockett as the wide receiver one, is really, and, and Herbert on the rock, that is not a bad team, even if you delete a fifth-round pick in DeAndre Swift. <laughs> I, I would agree with you. Uh, I mean, would I rather have Henry Chubb and Mixon or McCaffrey Dobbins and a running back here? I mean, I I think I like the Henry Chubb and Mixon well, side. Well, yeah, those, but, the, but, but those you were know, my I'm, first three picks. That I wasn't know. my fourth and my sixth rounder. Well, go ahead and make the selection, Jason. Who, who do you got? Uh, do I, am I allowed to make the selection? Who, well, what's your process? Uh, right now I'm looking at, so so the quarterback position is pretty much scooped up. As soon as Trevor Lawrence goes, that's where I usually wait for a while. I st I've started targeting Anthony Richardson um, as kind of the, the, the guy I want late. I'm also staring at right now, if I were to take a quarterback, it would be Deshaun Watson, someone I haven't drafted anywhere yet, but I, I can see an outcome where it is positive for him fantasy wise. Uh, but I, I would probably be at this point, not looking at a quarterback. I'd be looking at uh, a wide receiver. And if I'm staring down the options there, it would probably be Mike Williams uh, would be my selection. Go for it. Okay. Mike Williams, your pick here to stack with Olave in Higgins. You have Dobbins and CMC and you got George Kittle. And then you're going to have a long wait after this pick. So Remind uh, me what mayhems are left. <laughs> uh, I you, Mike has made the selection. The deucers have. So you have two left? I can pick your player for you or I can make you switch positions. Okay, 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 okay. Mm, what kind of game do I want to play here? Uh, play, the, play the truth. Who would you pick? I'm, I'm not playing the truth. <laughs> I'm playing. You got to give good advice. Uh, who I would pick? Yeah, just act like I'm not even here. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'm You're going just in a vacuum. All right. I will look at uh, taking Deshaun Watson because I haven't had him yet. Pair him with George Kittle, a player I haven't drafted yet, and try a different team. May, may I select that? Man. Yeah, you got you got duped. Yes. I knew he didn't want Watson. No. Yes. Uh, I'll I'll go ahead and. Make the selection for you, Deshaun okay. Watson. I'm, I'm going to go with. <laughs> I could, I could do that, huh? Yeah, yes. You make the rules here. Wait, he fist pumped. He did celebrate, like he Deshaun pulled. Watson. Yeah. It is. Take him. Oh my gosh! I just changed yes. your pick into your pick. Oh my good, what S mayhem? Select him. Okay. I really, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. That is. You put funny. your hand in the mouse trap. <laughs> yeah, you did. The, the, oh, I, you got the cheese, but uh, 
so the ironic part is <laughs> um, I really did want him. No, well, he he was in consideration. It wasn't like a complete anti uh Watson pick, but I really wanted a running back here. And and it, when I was on the clock, I would have taken James Cook. So I was hoping that you made me redo the pick and I didn't want to select the running back because then I would have to go to a different position. Honestly, my pick for you is going to be Brandon Ayuk, so you had a former oh, my man, guy all the, and a oh. triple 49er, but I like what happened a lot more. All right. So Dak goes right after Deshaun Watson is added to your roster. Who I Look, I like Deshaun Watson. I mean, I think he's going to be a good fantasy player this year. Sure. Pacheco goes next, then Ayuk goes. Dalvin Cook, 705, could be a good early season value. It, it could be a good we, pick. We just talked about the injury and the, the slower recovery timeline. Montgomery, Gibson, and James Cook. So the brothers go four picks apart. Michael Pittman, Pity City at 7.09. A.J. Dillon, Deontay Johnson. Mm. And then the hitman back on the clock here. Deontay Johnson would have been fantastic as one of these what edge a value. picks. Um, but something good has happened to my team, at least in my opinion. Michael Evans has dropped to oh, the seven. Oh, boy. To the 7.12. And... Like, wow! I mean, mayhem aside, you know, looking at the team with the three running backs at the beginning, the forced pick of another running back, like, I'm just, I don't even care at this point about, I'm, there's sleeper running backs, value running backs. You're basically that, that punting that position at I this have, point. I have to for my build. So, uh, Mike Evans would be my first pick here. Okay, you can take that player. Okay, so that is, that is, that's not the worst. That's not the worst thing that could have happened. Tyler Lockett and Mike Evans as my wide receiver one and two. That's amazing value, those two guys there. I, I know I have been less bullish on Mike Evans. Um, I'm not as confident that you know as, as, as some people in him, but if you're getting Mike Evans at the 7-8 turn, that's not where he belongs. Yeah, I mean that this is happening consistently, and and it happened in the on the team where you guys mayhemed me into a bunch of running backs. Right, Mike Evans ends up being the guy that sneaks through, and again, a round and a half later than Chris Godwin, um, <laughs> ha has had an outstanding camp. Love the pick. Your team's actually all right, Mike. Just we're imagine turning it around. Imagine if you had a fifth round pick. I know it would that be, would be, been, be, that so be crazy. Much better. <laughs> Mike, you are on the clock yet again. All right, again. Tell us your thought process. So here. It, I have it's it's for the people laying it out. If this were my team, I'm still in the wide receiver uh, area, uh, highest on the ADP. We got Jackson Smith and Jigba. Who, if I hadn't drafted Tyler Lockett and I only had two, like if I had more wide receivers, maybe I could be talked into doubling up on the Seahawks. I don't really want to do that. Uh, George Pickens of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's gotten good, consistent buzz out of training camp, but. I just I'm not really bought in. I think that Deontay Johnson and Fryermuth will be the targets uh, for them, and and Pickens will be okay. Jordan Addison in the concussion protocol could have the breakout of the rookie, but that gets me to the guy who I would be targeting, which I'm sure I won't be able to make this pick. But I would be selecting Jahan Dotson, second year wide receiver from the Washington Commanders, who I think that there is a chance that if we get some good quarterback play, which that's very up in the air that I think both Terry McLaurin and Dotson are going to be good picks and beat their ADP. Yep. Okay. Mayhem. All right. <laughs> well, Jason was just complimenting your team. Yes, he and was. And how it's been pieced together. So why don't I just give him the pick? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Let me look real quick at the running back position. Um, good Lord. You know what? You gave me T. Higgins. Instead of Chris a, Olave. I gave you a great player. And so I'm going to do you a solid, and I'm going to give you a different player that you that will actually help your build. I'm going to switch away from uh, Dotson. Dotson, and I'm going to give you a player that I really like, and I think he's perfect for your roster. I'm going to give you Jordan Addison. Okay. All right. I, I accept. You chose one of the players that he mentioned that he was looking at? Yeah. You felt like he was benevolent with the T. Higgins. He was nice to me. And honestly, I I want this experiment to work. Like, I <laughs> like I really like how his team you're, is. You're rooting for my team the, now. I am. The Derrick Henry, <laughs> Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon, J Justin Herbert start. When you go into the fifth round without a wide receiver, 
Oh, man. That seems impossible. And then you delete your fifth round. It's over. But this has actually turned out Tyler Lockett, Mike Evans, and Jordan Addison going in the sixth, seventh, and eighth round. That's pretty nice. We've, the, we've learned along the way the true mayhem is kindness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you you end up with Lockett, Evans, Addison as your three wideouts. Okay. Uh, we have one, okay. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve wideouts out of the last thirteen. Thank picks. goodness I got one. Oh, <laughs> so man. they were they just I, deleted Pickens. I would have perished. <laughs> yeah, if I gave you another running back, you would have been toast. Pickens, Smith, and Jigba, and then Ingram breaks the streak, and then Dotson, Quentin Johnston, Burks, Cooks. Thomas, Gabe Davis, Babe Davis. I was really hoping Babe Davis got to me. And Kadarius, Tony. Jason, you are back on the clock with Watson at quarterback, Kittle, Dobbins and McCaffrey at running back, and then three wideouts with Higgins, Olave, and Williams. Yeah, given that I've only got the two running backs, uh, I'm looking at that, that position right now. I would be selecting Khalil Herbert, mm -hmm. who I think at the 8-9 you know, turn is just – He's a really good value. It looks like he's locked into the starting role. I think he'll play the David Montgomery role, and he's succeeded in the past. So that would be my pick if I am allowed to select it. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and take Khalil Herbert. I can't stop you from getting him here because you're at the turn. Yeah. Which is kind of, you know, you guys, you're worried about the extra mayhem we have, but you got these back-to-back -back picks. There's a lot of gamesmanship going on now. You were going to get Herbert no matter what because I, I only got one, one mayhem left. Yeah, no, you 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 played you played it well. Um, and honestly, I'll just say who I would definitely pick here. I've been uh, rising more and more, which is funny because I started early this offseason high. I had Zay Flowers listed as the leader of that depth chart from the beginning, um, and as time went on, I got a little bit more and more afraid. But he's just been—he looks great. He's he's just the sweetness out there. The, yeah. His routes are like, if the camera is zoomed in on him, he leaves the frame. The cameraman is like, where'd he go? Imagine being a defender. Yeah, the cameraman's on inside coverage, and he uh, he, can't, <laughs> yeah. he can't make he's it outside. blocking the slant. Uh, look, he's a great player, but you ain't getting the pick. Mayhem. I would have taken Zay Flowers too, Jay. Yeah. yeah which so. means I cannot take a wide receiver. That's correct. You need to pivot. You get the choice. You can pivot. I'm using my final mayhem on you. Uh, which is no, I'm basically just slapping the nope on there, and you have to switch to another spot. So okay. you got to take a, you know, you you already got a tight end, you already got a quarterback. Yeah, so I'm going to look at the the running back position because I've got Christian McCaffrey, Dobbins, and Herbert. I feel like I can uh, explore here a little bit, maybe go um, off of ADP and get a little bit more wild. I was going to take Devon A Chain. Uh, because you know I really like him, but actually looking at this and thinking about the situations where you've got little bitty baby boy, Devon A-Chain, I'm going to go with the player that Mike and I were just so madly, madly in love with until he landed as a backup. I'm going to take Zach Charbonnet. I would never take okay. A-Chain above Charbonnet, so uh, Interesting. I'll add him to my roster. Well, Rashad Penny, how he has fallen in drafts at yeah. 902. You went Herbert Charbonnet, um, Fryermuth and Joku, Tua, Richardson, Cousins, <gasps> Jackson Sorry. Smith and Jigba, Aaron <laughs> Rodgers, <laughs> Brian Robinson, and Devon A. Chain. Mike, I know exactly how many how many mayhems do you have left? <laughs> uh, I think I only have one left for Mike. Yes, I think you. Yes, I, I can't believe it happened. Zay Flowers, Zay baby. Fla I mean, just yes, yes. No, you know way. what? Yes. I should have just made him take him with the next pick yes. just for punitive. I mean, you got Zay Flowers around after Jason. Yes. Uh, you Go ahead. You got one more. You got one I, more no, pick. I'm done, man. I'm no, good. you don't want the last I'm two good. picks? Yeah, I'm, you, I'm logging out. Lockett, Evans, Addison, Flowers. Would, <gasps> you, would you be pretty good going into the draft with that? What? Where we started and where we have ended are two very different places. Uh, I'm not sure my heart is strong enough for that. If, if DeAndre Swift was on was available here at, in the 10th round would I, you take him no <laughs> he's on my my dnd list do not draft all right um so we have i have two picks left you need to pick up a tight end i do need to pick and up i a, i could I, really leave you with none uh i do need to pick up a tight end here <laughs> and yeah. so wait just playing this out 
let's say you don't use your your yeah. mayhem here. Then next round, does Mike have to try to not draft the tight end <laughs> so that oh, if wow. you use the mayhem, he can have a tight end? But then you can. But then I can just it. not use the mayhem. Oh, mm. how wonderful! Uh, Who's your pick? I'm looking at the tight end position here. It's uh, we're, we are down into sleeper territory. Higby, Laporta, Schultz, Kincaid. Dalton Schultz has had zero mention this offseason. I, I just saw a little bit today that he has kind of been the most reliable player for the, the Texans pass catchers, which is not saying a whole lot. With uh, I mean, Tank Dell has been getting some, some highlight reels every once in a while. Uh, if I had to take a tight end from this group, oh my gosh, it's, it is not great. Um, but if it really were my pick, this is, it's way off of the ADP radar. I would take Fergalicious. I would take Jake Ferguson right here. Okay. Mayhem. I'll spare you the drama of the final round, so we'll we'll have you select. You you'll have to wait. Your la the last pick in the draft will be your tight end. Yes, and it, it will probably still be Fergalicious. It probably will be, but um, go ahead and make a different selection here as we we finish this. All thing. right, so I'm into the wide receivers. Oh gosh, are you into the wide receivers? Are no, you I'm I'm not into who's here. Well, not into, but I mean, like, are you considering uh, uh, another running back? If if Swift is a deletion, then you have three running backs, but that's it. Yeah, but I have three high, so, high level running backs to the point of I don't. Everyone who's left on the board is just. Well, well, I guess Cortland there's, Sutton is is. That's what I was gonna say. Is I don't know if I have the strength to do it, <laughs> but Cortland Sutton has. Did you ever cast lot your lot into another like go Rashad Bateman and hope that because just you double wait, up on the because you waited so long for wide receiver, you just picked the right one there. Um. No, okay. I don't. I don't think I would want to do that. I, I, I don't think it's a a terrible strategy at this point of the draft, but I'm not looking to do that. Uh, if I took a running back here, it would be it would be Tank Bigsby, uh, the backup, quote unquote, backup for the Jacksonville Jaguars, where he's been getting a lot of uh, good reports as well. And the the usages of preseason game one was maybe telling that. There was he wasn't on the like I think he took one snap with the starters, but of the the rookie backup running backs, guys weren't doing that, and and Tank Bigsby did that, and it was a third and short, and then they went to Tank Bigsby instead of Travis Etienne. I wonder if that's uh, the team kind of tipping their hand that Tank will be the short yardage, maybe the goal line running back. So that's that's interesting to me, but I would take uh, I would take Cortland Sutton right here, or I guess I get yeah, to make you, my you pick. You get to choose it. Oh, so. that is. I've been with the Cortland Sutton buzz going around, coming out of camp. I'm sure you've seen it on Twitter. I've been telling the guys if Cortland Sutton is good this year, I'm the range of emotions I will feel will be like extreme. I'll be joy that the player who I thought was good is actually good, furious that he was a my guy last year and now he's actually good this year, uh, rage, despair. Some happiness. Yeah, I mean, it's. A, I'll be all over. We've had a history of our uh, post hype my guys delivering. <laughs> delivering. Cooper post, post hype my guy. I mean, um, Cooper Cup was a my guy the year before he had yeah. one of the greatest seasons in NFL history. This is um, why everyone should be drafting Gabe Davis this year. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's going. The, the yeah, curse. because it's it's the it's the post. I, yeah, post hype my guy. Yeah. I, what's funny about Sutton is that, um, you know, if he's great. Then you were right about him a year late, right? But then, but it's still not helpful. But then you're mad about it. Yes. If he's bad again, then are you happy? Because I, I'm ecstatic. Okay. <laughs> Jason, let's make some final picks here. Two two final selections before we get into best ball breakdown. Two final selections. I'm looking at the wide receiver position. You really did ruin my roster by taking <laughs> away zay flowers and oh boy well at least mike didn't oh he did get him oh man yeah that, that i can't believe he fell. that was pretty crazy i was hoping elijah he was number Moore, one in adp at that point yeah yeah i was hoping elijah Moore would fall to me to stack with uh deshaun watson he did not i don't love the wide receivers on the board but i based on my team having only t higgins chris olave and mike williams i have to get wide receivers so i'm looking at uh i'm going to Select Allen Robinson. 
or I'm sorry, Alan Lazard. No, 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 no,
for redraft because rookie tight ends just don't produce. But unfortunately for Dalton Kincaid, for, for us, for fantasy, Dalton Kincaid is so alluring of he was the first-round pick. Did the Bills, Kyle, did the Bills dra uh, uh, trade up for? Yes. They, so they traded up for Dalton Kincaid. That's another input of how much a team uh, really wants to get a player. They don't want to take a chance that they're not going to get him. The comps coming out are ridiculous. The um, uh, training camp has been great. The training camp is, has been great. The snap numbers were already very interesting from their first week. And I, like, I'm scared to go for redraft because of knowing what the investment means that I have to take him. I could probably have to ride it out for a couple weeks, see if he's actually going to turn into anything. And then more than likely, I'm going to have to go to the waiver wire or make a trade and fill my tight end position that way. But if you if in best ball, you're going to take multiple tight ends. So you get at least a little bit of exposure to what if he is the one outlier? Because you get outliers athletic do upside. Happen. Yeah. Yes. And, and we say, I mean, look, let's just be honest here. Rookie wide receivers make contributions all the time. Yeah. Dalton Kincaid. Yes, he's he, he's categorically a rookie tight end, but the the odds are he's going to be running routes the majority of the time. If he's on the field, Gabe Davis inconsistent. No Isaiah McKenzie. Cole Beasley is gone. Khalil Shakir has been I, everything I've read at camp, and it's, I've read a few things has been fine. It's been uh, Deontay Hardy who's getting the yeah. Buzz. He's getting opportunities, which is a name people should know about. So if he was mentioned nasty. as a nasty boy, yesterday. you know, if, if you pretend Dalton Kincaid's drafted as a slot wide receiver, then then that category changes. It so, does. So and 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 Kyle Pitts had a thousand receiving yards as a rookie. It wasn't a fun ride, but in best ball, I get the I get the I, argument. I I totally see the argument, and obviously much better in best ball than in redraft. My issue is on underdog. He's the tight end eleven. It's just like yeah, but I'm okay. that's, I'm that's okay fair. With that's fair. It's just I feel like he's too high. Yeah, I mean, like someone like Juwan Johnson, who maybe you don't like the fact that the New Orleans Saints have John Johnson and they have Foster Moreau and they have Taysom Hill and now they have Jimmy Graham on the goal line. But guess what? Like John Johnson is showing out of camp and I'll just take all his good games and none of his bad ones yeah. in best ball. So, all right, those are some ideas for you. That was best ball breakdown presented by underdog fantasy. Get your first deposit matched up to $100 using the code ballers. One final reminder, get in there today. Ultimate for an opportunity to win the UDK for life and some sweet autograph swag from Derek Henry and T. Higgins. UltimateDraftKid.com, giving it away tomorrow. Don't miss it. We'll be live tomorrow afternoon. Got a great My Guys episode oh, oh, man. tomorrow morning. Tomorrow? Yeah. It's tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.